all patterns are self-induced, but it just was one of the patterns that I didn't even realize that I was in it. But when we have that oneness, we recognize that the ego is a tool. It's a part of us, just as it is everyone else's ego is a part of them. And therefore, everyone and everyone's ego is a part of the whole. The very fact is that the universe is a projection, right? So at the end of the day, it all comes back to you. When you inhale and then pause and right before you're about to exhale, and then when you exhale and right before you're about to inhale, so much life and so much purpose happens in those two pauses. The boundary gets tested only when we violate it. Because how else are you going to know? We have to kind of push those boundaries to expand our awareness. And through the awareness, then we can gain the knowledge that is necessary. So all of these things are interactions. And you are basically giving everything a permission to interact with you. That is the quantum dance. Hey, Heart Leader community, this is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silence Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025, and you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silence Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. You have, a, have you had a nice week, by the way? I would say that it was quite a week for me because I had to exit a pattern, which is why I said boundary, remember? Wow. I had to exit a pattern that has been very, very, a very uh, self-induced pattern. Of course, all patterns are self-induced, but it just was one of the patterns that I didn't even realize that I was in it. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. I know that's pretty, it's like a thriller movie, right? I mean, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it makes life you know, not boring, which is nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that is the thing, right? For me, like I just go from one, uh, you know, like that, you know, that game where you are, the frogs keeps popping out and then you keep, right? And yeah. then the speed changes, right? The way they come or where they come from, all that keeps changing because the better you are, the more challenging life becomes. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Right? It's yeah. almost like it's like it's like, do I need to get better or should I just take a pause, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and it's, it's it's always a good reminder because yeah, it does it does feel a little overwhelming, but then like, okay, well I've got another level. And so I'm I'm raising up my levels. And uh and so yeah, I definitely understand the one thing that really continues to help me is that quote um where we're never given we're never given what we can't handle. And that's always such a beautiful thing, especially when things feel like overwhelming. Um, yeah, that's, that's just, that one sits. It's, uh, yeah, hundred percent. And I agree with that. I mean, cause, because it actually quantum physics explains that very well, right? Because if you think about it, like the entire, every single thing that turns into that dense reality, right. That we experience to the point where we are kind of in it is our creation yeah. technically, right? Because we may not be aware of it because of our subconscious mind, but we are co-creating it by all the things that we do to get to that point, to get to that moment, mm. right? Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's fun. That's, that's <laughs> beautiful when, when a, a quote that like hits you at your heart and you also, and then you can like embody it, but also then it can be explained by science in that way, it just, it just makes it more impactful and powerful. Thank you. I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amazing. I think that is the reason that the more you understand all these things, you're like, my God, but yeah, I, I think that I actually can. Okay. I think I'm going to share something with you. Do you want me to just go ahead and share something with you? That is um, pretty vulnerable, but I guess I'm okay to share. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically it has to do with the fact that I'm in a very, obviously challenging pattern uh, with uh, with one of my very close family member okay mm -hmm. and i am not feeling good because you know the people that we give a permission to become close to us right yes they are the one who triggers us the most right i mean technically we give them a permission but then you know the triggers us the most and then it hurts a lot and you realize that of course you know there's a reason you are going through all that, but no matter how much learning you have done or you understand how everything becomes reality like I do, at the end of the day, when you're in the midst of the storm, 
it hurts like hell. Mm. Right? So yeah. it was one of those days for me. It was one of those days for me. And I, out of desperateness, <laughs> called one of the friends that I only call like once in a while. But she mm. has some contacts that, I, because I'm an engineer. So no matter how miserable I feel, I want to solve the problem. Yes. And at the same point, I understand quantum physics. So when you change one thing, you change everything, right? So yeah. my goal was that if I, because I wanted to exit that miserable reality, but I also wanted to feel empowered. So I had to call somebody who could give me a contact that may help me bridge the problem that I was trying to solve. So I called her asking for help in that sense. But in, in spite of helping me directly with the contact, because she truly didn't have it, she felt concerned about me, my emotional health. Mm -hmm. And she basically invited me to a party because in her mind, <laughs> she felt like you just come to a party. There's going to be lots of food and we are all going to love on you. And you just have to leave, you know, uh, where you are and just come. And I did not feel like going to a party. I mean, you know, I wanted to just cry, right? Why would I want to go to the party? I mean, that requires you to get ready and all that. So I didn't want to do any of that. So I said, no, this is not the time for any of it. I just want to be in my pajama and cry and, and just feel bad for me. I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I didn't agree with her, but then she was not quitting on me. She kept calling me multiple times, texting me. She, then she came up with this creative ways. She said, I really need your help. Like she was using all the possible strategies she could to get me to come to her house. And I was thinking that that was an act of love, right? Yeah. And even though I already made my salad, I was eating it, but then it dawned on me that, you know what? I have never done what she is offering because I've never left my miserable feeling and gone to a party. Right. I mean, I've never done that. Mm. So to me, since I want to, you know, I want to walk the talk. Right. So yes. I'm, I'm going to do something that's very uncomfortable, which means that I'm going to go to the party. Okay. So basically what I did was, <laughs> of course I got ready ba the best I could considering I was not feeling that well. Right. And I thought I wore a really nice dress, but I go to the party and I enter the door and I have no idea. Like, so there are like about 30 people, all of them dressed like you've gone into like an award ceremony. Like they all were looking absolutely gorgeous, right? They all have like beautiful clothing on, like makeups with layers and layers of makeup, jewelry, lots of food. Like it was just a party that was loaded. It was a Persian party. Okay. And they just go out of the way to dress up. So as soon as yeah. I entered, so I am basically completely underdressed. And according to everybody else, I did not wear any makeup because from their standards. Yeah. And then I'm not feeling well, so I'm not smiling. So then I'm trying to be invisible, right? So go in the kitchen because I just want to eat a little bit of food. And then one of the women just comes to me and just minded, I don't know anyone, right? There's 30 people. The only person I know is my friend, one mm -hmm. person. So she comes to me and she says that, oh, how are you doing, right? And you know, Austin, I have a very hard time saying I'm doing well when I'm not, right? So I said, well, it's been a challenge. And today's one of those challenging days for me. And then she started saying that, oh, let me tell you something. You just need to change your mindset and everything will be fine. You could see Austin at that point. I was so, I was like, today, I don't want to change my mindset. Today, I want to feel miserable. Can you just leave me alone? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, can you just give me one day or maybe one hour where I can feel bad and nobody should judge me? I mean, right. that's exactly where I wanted to be. So it was interesting because he had, she had no idea whom she's talking, right? She's trying to give me this whole preaching about mindset. And I'm like, oh, goodness gracious. So I had to just stay quiet, listen to what <laughs> it was. It was a test of patience in every which way. And then ultimately, you know, the cat was out of the bag. My friend introduced me to everybody and said all of my, all the things I do. And then it was like full fledged. Everybody is interested in me. As much as I wanted to be invisible, I was not successful. <laughs> Such as life, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. And it is, it is really. There's a couple things that were that really intrigued me in that in that story. Um, one of which is is this. You know, Amber and I have talked about unsolicited advice. That's definitely one of them. And you know, being. You know, when you're in a space and you want to feel a certain way and you want to experience something a certain way and someone comes in and just says, you should do this without any, you know, prompting or anything like in many ways, it's, it's, it's very kind and loving and caring, but at the same time, it's, it's also a push of information versus a seeking to understand where you're at. 
And so, I, you know, I know that's, that's tough, especially when you're not in a space to want to receive it. And then on top of that, <laughs> we've got, you know, it's like, Hey, I just, I just want some time to just feel, I feel like there's been this strong sense of society. That's we're almost like, we almost want to, and again, it's, I feel like it comes from a place of love where we want to almost take away the bad feelings that people are having, but to some degree, we're unintentionally making it that it's, it's, we're making people feel like it's not okay to have those feelings. Right, right. And I think that if you understand the environment, right, if I would have wanted to entertain, I would have gone in the middle of all the people where they were sitting. The fact that I'm sneaking in the kitchen, like somebody who doesn't want to be uh, interacted with, right? I was only by myself in the kitchen for a very good reason because yeah. I wanted to be left alone, right? It's pretty obvious. So, 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 you know, like those are the, the cues. I was leaving a lot of cues there. The, you know, I was completely like out of their patterns in every which way. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was definitely interesting, but I think it was my test, right? Because in a way I had to experience that mirror just just to kind of like wow right and 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 of course i learned a lot by going there experiencing what i did and the fact that i did something that was very uncomfortable for me yeah absolutely i mean that's um you know as as a scientist i know that's that's part of the things that you constantly are are doing on a day-to-day -day basis but you know it's it's a little bit when it's more of a quote unquote controlled environment uh versus yeah. a social standpoint when it's outside and you know it's you now it's like all these uncontrollables in that sense and and you're like no i just just let me let me be <laughs> Exactly, exactly. It was just hilarious. And at one point I was sitting in the middle of the table and there's about 20 beautiful women around me. All of them are speaking Persian, which I don't understand. And even though my name is Persian, right? So yeah. I'm actually very happy. I'm, I was like fat, dumb and happy, right? Because I'm just eating my food because I, I knew that I truly don't want to interact with anyone right now. I'm just processing all the things that I have in my heart, right? So I was yeah. very happy with all of that. And then my friend introduces me and then everybody's looking at me. I'm like, I got caught. <laughs> Mm. It's like, I wanted to be invisible. I just want to be left alone. And now everybody's looking at me and I have to actually talk to these people. Right, right. And you have to, <laughs> you have to almost like present, right? Yes. Right. I mean, even mm. though the, the, the mode turns on pretty automatically. And then of course I open my mouth and then I attract even more people. And I was like, wow, what did, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah, but it was definitely an interesting experience. But you know what you said about the unsolicited advice. So now I have another story to share. Do you want me to share it? Please, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this story has to do with the fact that I'm on a satellite beach, right? While I was exploring my uh, my possible different uh, space to 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 exist at, yeah. and then I'm basically walking on a beach, and then I see three people, right? They're kind of very consumed by something going on uh, on the ground of the you know uh, dust or sand, you can say, white sand. So uh, so basically I'm kind of wondering what they're looking at, but I didn't know what they were looking at. So I'm just kind of inquisitive, but I'm passing by, I'm just walking on my own, right? Yeah. And all three of them look at me, they turn around, they look at me and they said that, would you mind giving us some advice? And I mean, that just came out of left field, right? So I'm thinking that I must be like, emitting some sort of aura that makes people feel that they can trust me, right? Because that's a pretty big thing because there are three and I'm just one. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's going on? And then they said, look, and then I looked down and there was this beautiful turtle, right? It was a baby turtle. It was a baby turtle that was completely facing opposite of the ocean and it was lost. And they were all like really in love with the turtle, but they were wondering if they should pick up the turtle or if they should, what should, what should they do with the turtle? So that was the actual quest, right? So they're all wondering, but they're not doing anything. So they were asking me, what is your opinion? Mm. And I said, well, based on quantum physics. <laughs> <laughs> based on quantum physics. I go straight to quantum physics. No, because that is, the, you know, I mean, if I say based on my Islamic religion, I mean, just think about how many stones am I going to get, oh, right? I mean, so I, <laughs> so I used what I thought was the safest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so anyway, I said, and which actually, and, and I can explain that with quantum physics. So I felt like that is a, that is a more straightforward uh, language. So anyway, I told them that based on quantum physics, you know, when you uh, look at the electron, what happens? It acts like a particle, right? So the very mm -hmm. fact that all of you are looking at the turtle, you are affecting your reality and you're affecting turtle's reality just by virtue of looking at it because, you know, um, observation affects momentum. So I explained them that, right? And uh, they said, oh, that's very interesting. Nobody 
Uh, and then they were like, oh, wow, we didn't know quantum physics is this simple. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I wrote the book, because it is that simple. And then, and then they said, okay, so, so then I said, based on that, and then based on Star Trek, right, the prime directive, I said that you don't want to help the turtle, because if you help the turtle, you're helping the turtle based on what you think the best outcome for the turtle is. Mm. You see? So yeah. now you are imposing what your belief on the turtle. <laughs> yes. And they're like, yeah, you got that right. And I said, well, I know that all of you guys love the turtle. There's no question about it. But I said, how about you broadcast the love to the turtle and trust the process mm. and see what happens because you let the turtle decide its fate. And there's a chance the turtle will you know, not make it and die. I mean, that's the chance you're taking. But there's also a chance the turtle will do what's right. But I said, if you place the turtle in the ocean, then even though in your mind, it's good for the turtle, but turtle may think, may get overwhelmed and may die anyway. You see the point? I mean, in both cases. So I was kind of like, so when I did the whole explanation, they all agreed and they said, yeah. And then I said, let's just hold hand. And then we all send the love to Turley. It was hilarious. So we're all basically doing this turtle magic. And then right when we were doing it, it was so interesting. The turtle completely rotated facing towards the ocean and started walking towards the ocean. Not only that, the ocean started coming towards the turtle because, you know, the waves, right? So it was constantly piling up towards. So the whole dance, the quantum dance was occurring right in front of our eyes. That's amazing. What a beautiful story. And that's, I love, I love that you brought up Star Trek. First of all, we, we are, we are doing a deep dive into Star Trek next generation. And that's like, you know, I, I had never, I've never seen these. I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I haven't really done this. And so to learn about this as we're watching this and hearing you provide an example is just perfect. So thank you for that. And, it, and you're, you're so right. Like that, that's a lesson that I feel like so many of us really need in our interactions with each other. We could learn a ton from what you just provided because oftentimes what we want to do is we want to come into a situation. We want to scoop, scoop up that individual that we feel needs the help and then make the process easier for them. However, that, that kind of takes away from the important part, which is the friction. And the friction allows us to grow. It'll, it gives true. us the experience. And so if we take away that experience from something or someone, uh, then we are taking away their opportunity to grow. That is true. And if they're not grown enough, then they're not going to handle the new environment. Because in order to get there, remember, then it comes back to what you said earlier, is that you only get what you are capable of handling it. Yes. Right? Exactly. So that's not going to happen if you're not capable of handling it because somebody gave you that uh, lift Exactly. It's so right. And that's, uh, Amber and I really talk a lot about, you know, as we move forward and evolve in this experience, you know, as a human being, you know, we, 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 there's a, there's a resonance, there's a frequency in which our consciousness, uh, that we, that we sit in our consciousness. And as we evolve that, that frequency expands and, and raises, or it could lower depending on that's where true. we're at and the things that we're going on in, in our lives. And, you know, it's, it's really important for us to give people that space and give ourselves that space to allow for, for that rising of that frequency. And we can view things from that perspective. Uh, you know, and then we realize like, okay, we're not going in, we're not taking something over or releasing, releasing people from the opportunity to rise up. Because if we want to be like, let's say, for example, if we want to be patient, you know, we're not just giving little fairy dusts of patience, right? We're, we're actually giving opportunities to become patient. Yeah. And so we have to, we have to hold that frequency of patience. And so if, if some, if something is done for us, then we can't choose to hold that frequency and embody that frequency and then understand that from a soul and a human level. And so it's more than just taking away that opportunity for someone. There is, I feel like what you're bringing forward is a, is a beautiful explanation of how the science behind it, as well as the lesson behind it. Right, right. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, wow, what a beautiful opportunity for me. Because, you know, later on when I realized that, like, you know, wow, I mean, that experience, and actually it made me feel like, I, I felt very good about that experience because you know how like we always long for merge uh, like convergences right like if you're 
if you are ready to share your wisdom and if somebody is ready to embrace the wisdom, then that to me is the perfect marriage. Yes. You're so right. And it's not our, it's not our opportunity to push that on someone else. It's actually our opportunity to embody and express it within ourselves. And those who desire that then will be attracted to that. Right. Exactly. And I just love that organic, right? That yeah. organic uh, experience that I ended up having that made me feel like, wow, the people are ready to be spoken like that because they were strangers, right? And they ended up listening to me. Not only they listen, they actually changed their course correction, right? Based on what I said. Yes. So well said. I mean, that's, and that's <laughs> empowering, right? It's empowering for you. It's empowering for them. You know, they get to see themselves through the process. You get to see yourself through the process and you get to see each other through the process, which is to me is back to your point about mirroring. It's so beautiful. You know, mirroring is often used in and sometimes in a very, in a, it can be in a negative way where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm mirroring um, some of these negative behaviors. But I, I mean, it goes both ways. You can, you can mirror positivity. You can mirror, uh, you know, the, an evolving of, of what you desire to experience in, in a higher frequency. And so I, I love, I love the fact that, thank you for sharing this. And I'm, I'm really glad that the turtle made it through and, and was able to, uh, through your, exactly. your, your, the love and the power and the support and the connection and the ocean and the earth and everything came together for, for it to achieve what it desired. And, and that's really what's happening is, is when we, when we allow that to happen, we don't, we don't seek to control through the illusion of control. We actually surrender into the experience. Then we can allow the universe to uh, work with us and connect with us and, and collaborate with us. Right, exactly. <clears throat> but on the other hand, I actually realized, because I was thinking about that turtle story, by the way, when I was going through my challenges that I mentioned earlier, because, and that is related to the boundary. Remember I said that boundary. So it's interesting because, you know, when we are not even aware, like, you know, boundary gets tested only when we violate it. Mm. Because how else are you going to know? Yeah. There's just no other way to know, right? So I was thinking about that, that the only way you know is when, <clears throat> That's why, you know, people use all these words like exploitation and all that. And truly, yeah, but there's no other way you're going to get. I mean, you have to get to the edge to experience it. And then you need to say how much you want to experience it or how long you want to experience it. I mean, that's the decision you make, right? And those are sometimes very subconscious decisions, which is the reason you don't see the pattern. Yes, that's such a good point. And oftentimes, well, uh, Knowledge is limited by awareness, right? And so what you're talking about is, is we have to kind of push those boundaries to expand our awareness. And through the awareness, then we can gain the knowledge that is necessary. Right. And so, and oftentimes we, we, when we think about boundaries specifically, and I know we were kind of starting to dive into this a little bit, was that, okay, well, when we think about boundaries, we often think about the external to the internal in terms of those boundaries. But what about, what about our own boundaries within ourselves? You know, how mm -hmm. often? Are we willing to kind of do what you just did uh, in the first story of where you're like, oh, you know, my boundary is like, I just want to be in my PJs and I want to be home and I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I just want to be in and, and just be, be by myself. But you right. pushed your own boundary and got out of your comfort zone to expand yourself. And, and you know, it, it might not have been the most pleasant experience in some areas, but you were willing to grow. You're willing to learn. You're willing to, uh, you know expand and and you know that's if the universe is constantly expanding then why shouldn't we exactly because i met all these incredible people and i had some very interesting deep conversation and i did feel that i made an impact that i wouldn't have made if i would have stayed in my house right so right. no matter what and plus i learned so much more about myself so it was a very good uh, it was definitely quite a new portal for reality for me to experience mm. and i've never done something like that so there was just so many interesting aspect of it. And, and you're right about the whole boundary about internal and external. Mm -hmm. And, and the very fact is that the universe is a projection, right? So at the end of the day, it all comes back to you. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. I'd like to expand on that kind of boundary aspect relative to 
quantum science and kind of get your your thoughts because in, you know, in, when Amber and I talk about it, we talk about it more from that practical standpoint of you know how do I create uh, guiding principles and personal boundaries, right? Um, and it's like okay, how do I allow the external? You know, what do I allow from the external in? And then how do I how do I desire to interact with the world around me? Mm -hmm. and, having those are fantastic. I mean, that's, I wish that I, I only wish that I had that earlier in my life. I wish that was a part of my growth as a child to help me understand myself better and, and to move through my life at, 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 a, at an exponential rate. I think that's what that actually does. But I'd love to kind of hear from you as, as you're, you're kind of really diving into, into boundaries here. Um, you know, what, what your feelings are on these boundaries and, and like, I'm kind of going to go a little bit more out of the, out of the norm here and, and talk about, um, in relation to, uh, memories and energy, mm -hmm. because oftentimes we want to create these boundaries or we feel like they've been violated in certain areas because of either of past memories. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and so I kind of wanted to get your feedback on your thoughts on the, on how a quantum entanglement connects with, uh, past memories between who we are now and the, the moment of the memory experience in that other now moment. Right. Okay. So, so it's funny because this is something I'm actually designing a course because I learned so much with my current experience and I call that relationship dynamics. And, and, mm. and I'll tell you why, because it's so embedded in so many different things, right? So let's, let's take it to like a level where we are interacting with everything, right? Everything that comes in our contact, whether it's your thought, whether it's your emotion, whether it's your feeling, Right. So all of that you're interacting with in, internally. And then everybody that is outside of you, you're right. From your perspective, like the people that you interact with or the gadgets that you're interacting with by watching the YouTube video or whatever you're watching on or television or, or, or laptop, those are gadgets, right? So there's people. And then there are people that you are very intimate with the close people, the friends, the family, the, the children, uh, you know, the parents, whatever, the people that you've given a lot more, you know, like a, like a, like you are more vulnerable to them because you've given them the space to be very close to you, which means they can affect you even more drastically. Right. Mm. I mean, that to me is a different category of people versus people in general. And then, so all of these things are interactions and you are basically giving everything a permission to interact with you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is the quantum dance. It's like, you are doing that with all of these different aspects of you, not only that, where you are in space and time, right? Which means the place that you are, because, you know, whether you're in the ocean or whether you're in the mountain, right? Whether you're in a party like I was, or whether in your, in your pajama, right? I mean, and uh, in your bed sleeping, <laughs> all of these are different places, right? So they, yeah. they affect you, right? But depending on where you are, basically it boils down to how are you feeling because you're, are you comfortable or are you not? So when you really look at this whole quantum dance and then understand your multidimensional self, I actually have a diagram in mind. I, I, I just need somebody who can start drawing these things because I have all these things in my head, right? And it basically shows you the web, the spider web that of interconnection and how mm. every single thing at the subatomic level is affecting you. It's affecting your vibrations, affecting your frequency. And based on that quantum dance, you are accessing what that represents to you. That's where mm. the memory comes in, right? Because that is already stored, but it also is being accessed by you because of where you're tapping into, you see? So it kind of becomes like you are deciding exactly what memory to access subconsciously. Mm, I love that. And if these are memories that we's, we've experienced in the past, then we have that quantum entanglement to that, that momentary time when it was experienced, but it also, sometimes it feels like we're experiencing it in the moment, which is why it can be so visceral, right? Exactly. Because you are right. Because the experience, right. Then it becomes your senses, your feeling, your thought. So what you feel. Mm. So that is where your multidimensionality kicks in and you, so you can have the same memory can be passed to somebody else and they may pick up a whole different, um, you know, attributes, right. For them to feel or for them to think, or for them to sense. So it becomes a hologram. The memory becomes a hologram, and then you choose which vantage point you want to access that at. 
Interesting. I love that. Do you feel it's important with memories that no longer serve us? You know, we, we definitely hold on to them for a reason. And maybe we, it's for us to be able to experience them later and to move through them. Um, but do you feel that there's a point maybe where it's important to actually decouple that, that entanglement uh, when they're no longer serving us, when they're maybe causing us to block or they're keeping us from evolving or moving forward? Yeah, you know, that's where the boundary comes in, right? So in a way, it kind of is interesting because on one hand, you don't want to feel it, right? Because it doesn't feel good, let's say. But on the other hand, it is a gauge for you to see that how far do you want somebody else to push you? Mm. I like that. Right? So yeah. then it becomes another quantum. That's where the discernment comes, right? Like how, how long do you want to be in that groundhog day, right? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's so beautiful. And um, I, I genuinely feel like from, from my heart that, you know, myself and everyone are, are creator beings and our, our greatest sense of being able to create is through the choice of the now moment. And so when we make a choice that create, that just creates a reality, it creates an opportunity, it creates a way for us to learn about ourselves. And the more conscious and intentional we can become behind those choices, the greater, uh, the greater we can move through the reality at maybe either an exponential pace or a more purposeful pace. Um, um, but it keeps us maybe from being in that groundhog day as you're talking about. hundred percent, hundred percent. And that is exactly the key, by the way, because what happens when you are, you can consciously sub uh, reprogram your subconscious. That's what I say. Nice. Right. And it sounds like a, what are you saying? But mm -hmm. yes, because you know, when you're conscious already, you're doing something different. Yes. Mm. I love that. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's very interesting. And that, and that's the thing that I have learned something that like, I'm like, wow. And, and, and the good thing is when you learn, right, then you put the light on it or you reveal yourself something that was hidden to you. And when you reveal it to yourself, then you have changed the charge on it. Mm. Interesting. Mm. And that would be in many ways, kind of transmutation. Yes. Yes. Okay. I love exactly. that. I love that. Cause yeah, when we, it's when we feel emotions, it does because especially when it can be so visceral like that, it's, it's hard to, and we embody it almost. It's hard to remind for me, it's sometimes hard for me to remind myself that it is in, it is energy. And because it's energy, we have that opportunity to transmute it. And so sometimes it feels like it can be overwhelming and you can get stuck in it and, and unintentionally or unconsciously, then we do embody it and then we can get stuck in it. But I love what you're bringing forward is, is like, Hey, we can, we can transmute it. We are, we are reality generators in that sense. Exactly. And then remember you mentioned friction, right? So you need the friction, you need the learning, you need the pain, right? Yes. You need the, um, you know, you need the transmutation, but all of that are the attributes of coming home <laughs> to yourself. Yes, that's good. I really like that. And what do you feel right now is like so important for you as, 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 I mean, we've, we've been really fortunate to like just kind of chat and just get to know each other <laughs> over the past couple, couple months since we, since we met and I know you've brought up boundaries a couple of times, like what's, what's really sitting with you right now with boundaries or is there, are you looking at it from a scientific standpoint? Are you looking at from it more from a personal experience? Are you building your own, you know, would you mind kind of diving into that? I'm just, I'm just genuinely curious. Yeah. Well, I'll just share what I'm going through because I think that my son will appreciate it one day. Right now, he probably won't. Uh, but basically, you know, for me, the biggest challenge that I was given in my life was that my oldest son was born with a cerebral palsy, right? And he was only seven months old when I learned about his condition. And I was told that he won't be able to walk, talk, or have any kind of normal life. Don't introduce a language, multi-language with him. Uh, he may even barely speak a language. So it was a very negative prognosis. And of course, at the time I was married to my first husband, who is kind of very devoted Muslim man. 
and kind of patriarchal, right? So he's like, how can my firstborn would be not what I was hoping for? So from that point on, you know, because I have been always a little bit of a survivor, fighter, warrior type of personality, I took this upon myself that I'm going to do my best as a mother to make him the self-sustaining human craft. Mm. Right. So that I took it on myself, which kind of became a like, you know, because it was not an easy task to take upon. And I was by myself because my, you know, his dad wasn't on board. And so I've been single handedly raising this this child of mine. And the biggest challenge is that because he was given all these challenges, I kind of compensated for it by taking it upon me. Right. So I kind of violated my boundary without realizing it. And as a mother, you know, how long are you going to keep doing that? Right. And I kind of did it way longer, like so long that it's not even funny. He is 27 years old and I'm still in that pattern. So it kind of darned on me. And my other, I have three other kids, right? They're all boys too. They all saw that my kindness was not reciprocated. It was taken as my weakness. And I realized that more and more. Uh, But then, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's almost, that's why I'm saying it's almost like a thriller movie, right? Like you are in in like a quicksand and now you're realizing you're going to die. I mean, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Because you have perpetuated that uh, reality because of your own action. Interesting. Thank you. And it, is, it is a hard one, right? Because it's a mother. So it's a role of a mother. But I realize that it doesn't matter what role playing you're doing, right? And that's why I wanted to make a point about this whole thing is that when you, just like with the turtle, right? If I would have done the same thing with him, I wouldn't be where I am. But I didn't because as a mother, I uh, projected a reality that I see he has a high potential accomplishing it. And I somewhat imposed on him and myself to Mm. take the burden. I understand. Thank you for being vulnerable and and sharing that. It means, it means a lot. Do you feel that when you, when you look at things from this perspective, um, do you look at this also from a soul level? Like maybe do you ever, do you, do you view it as that maybe you came in and this was the roles and the ways that you would help each other learn and grow from that perspective? Or do you have different perspectives or, or how do you, how do you navigate through this? No, I a hundred percent agree. It is definitely a, it's basically a soulmate contract, right? Because yeah. soulmate can be anyone who basically tests you to the, to the extent that he tested me. Right. And I tested him from his perspective. And I think that, yes, and, and it's interesting because I, I told you, right, that you decide how long what you want to stay in that Groundhog Day, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, some people never even exit those days, right? They just don't even know that they're in those patterns. So I actually feel very fortunate that I'm looking at it right now. And it's very obvious to me that I have to be, you know, I'm going to use this reference, by the way. I have watched some movies where you see like, you know, like a black mother kicking their son out. And, and for their own good, right? But the son does not recognize at the time, right? Because they are like upset. But then later on, they realize that what their mom did was a tough love, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. I kind of basically realize that that's what I need to do. Mm-hmm. And it is not easy for someone like me to do at all. I'm not very good at those things because I am a people pleaser and, and I don't like to do that to anyone. And I mean, my son, my goodness gracious. Right. So, yeah. so basically it became uh, like, and, but remember life is all about you getting to get, do things that you don't like to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is where we are right now. I had to create this whole situation for me to kind of like look in my face and uh, make me challenge in ways that I didn't want to be challenged. Right. Yeah. It's, it's almost through the process, you know, he's also uh, helping you. Uh, learn and grow immensely through that as well. So it's, it's a beautiful thing when it's viewed as the mutual versus one sided because everything's always, uh, there's always a two sides to, to it. It's always mutual, right? Uh, It can be out of balance. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It can be totally different. I mean, that's where, 
right? That's where the, it depends on who wants to decide to exit the pattern because there's always going to be one person may see the pattern, but they're still okay with it because they are not feeling they're okay with it. It's like, it's almost like, you know, if somebody wants to spend time with you, right. And they're okay to spend time with you, even if you're mad at them, because Mm -hmm. their goal is not that you're nice to them. Their goal is, I just want to be with you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how you treat me because I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. You see, but then I'm not okay with it because I don't want to show up in a way that I don't like myself. You see? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you hold authenticity, uh, very high in, in the way that it seems just from my short term, then a short time that I've known you. Um, it just, I can, you, it's, uh, it's definitely very apparent that that's so important and that's a beautiful thing. And like, you won't, you only show up to a certain thing in, in a certain way, if it's authentic to you. And I feel like that's such a, a, a rare and cherished quality, uh, that, I, I feel like more people desire to do that, but probably don't even know how because they, it's our society hasn't really been set up to really help people understand what it even means to be their authentic self or how to be that. And I think what you're talking about, these guiding principles and becoming more conscious of your choices, you know, these are tools to help us understand our authentic selves at a much deeper level, on a soul level, recognizing that, you know, how do we start to align you know, our, our body in terms of our doing, you know, our, our thought process, our, our uh, emotional management and our soul level connection. And when we can really align those four things, I mean, that then we're tapping into our greatest potential and we can experience the greatest version of the grandest vision of who we are. But so much of the world is constantly telling us how to be, what to do, where to go, all these things that it just feels like a constant fight. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. So I appreciate you kind of walking through some of these areas that, you know, as, as a person, as a human, I mean, you have um, all these amazing accolades as a rocket science for <laughs> scientists for NASA and, and, you know, writing a, a book and uh, being a coach. And, you know, I mean, you help so many people in so many ways. Um, it's just, it's very refreshing to hear, that you know you're you're a human too and you're going through these things and that your experience is what's valuable and so thank you for sharing it just means a lot yeah yeah welcome and and you know when you use the word authenticity right i always say that if you don't if you're not honest to yourself right then or or if you're not honest to others right because they're everybody's a mirror to you then you're actually dishonest to yourself because you know it all is it's the same. Mm-hmm. When you're dishonest to other people, you're actually dishonest to yourself. Yeah. And to me, it takes a lot of energy to kind of uh, sell the perception. So now you're wasting a lot of energy in the process. So to yeah. me, authenticity seems like the most efficient thing to do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, as an engineer, I'm all about efficiency. I'm like, how can we make this like so efficient that we don't, you know, I mean, yeah. yeah they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. That's yeah. So <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, so yeah. are you someone when you put into things practice like this, uh, are you mm-hmm. someone, do you write down your, your boundaries as you're experiencing them? Do you, do you like log them or like, do you p- apply a scientific method to it? Or is this more ethereal or is it more experiential? Do you mind? I, I'm again, I'm just, I'm curious on how you approach the world. Right, right. So when I do come to the, and that's why when I design a course, you know, that's when I write some exercises that I would do, right? Yeah. And uh, and basically it becomes more like that. And that's why I even did like on, like I was thinking about all of it. So I did a video on Instagram, which basically explained that how every single thing that comes into our exists, you know, into our energy field is programming us every single thing. Whether it's a it's a call to a friend, whether it's like a, you, whatever you're reading on anywhere, um, whether the channel that you dial on a television, uh, whether the people that you live with, right? Every single person, you're giving them permission to reprogram you. Because anytime when you talk to anyone, if you think about it, they're putting a spell on you with their words. And you're doing the same thing, of course. I'm not saying we're, it's, it's happening both ways. But if you really start understanding that every single thing is programming you at all times, and you're choosing to say yes to those programs or no based on your action, then that's it right there. 
becomes the most important way you can you can process, especially the patterns that are not serving you, right? Yeah. So I basically draft an exercise, right? Because I have an exercise that I would give you to 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 kind of quantificate yourself in that way because I naturally do it because I have to, you know, I always look at my things and I say, so like, for example, in this particular case, when you are in a pattern that is very deep, right? That is very, it has so many tentacles, but the good thing is you can still exit the pattern. So for me, I exited the pattern just by virtue of calling a friend that I never call. Mm-hmm. Right. Not only that, then I exited the pattern by rather than spending time feeling sorry for me, I go to a party that was even more uncomfortable, even if I wouldn't be feeling bad, you see? So I kind of did something extreme there. I mean, that was my version of skydiving. So, you know, the very funny thing is we were talking about boundary. We were talking about relationship dynamics. We were talking about how do we solve it and the internet goes out, right? And if you think about it, that was our means of communicating with each other. And what I felt almost is that communication is the key, right? So communication is the key for the boundary. See, the thing is we give people permission to trigger us and violate our boundary. We do, right? So so this afternoon, like, you know, going back to the whole boundary thing, it was kind of like if somebody wants to to feel that they can trust you or you want to feel that you can trust them, then how do you do that? And you have to earn it, Mm. right? So it's not just about... So basically, as a mother, I have to teach that through my actions, which requires a communication that is beyond words. Hmm. That's a really good analogy. Yes. That's amazing. It's almost like it's almost like that was meant to happen just so, <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> just so I can tell you this, right? <laughs> that, yeah, because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling yeah. you that I'm realizing because, see, I... And that's, that's when it becomes the embodiment, right? That's when it becomes the multidimensionality. Because see, a lot of time we can't solve a problem just from one vantage point. Right. right. And that's when we start, it's such a beautiful perspective. And when we start to, I feel like when we start to recognize the oneness, we start to recognize that we are everyone else and everyone else is us then the opportunity to expand our awareness and view from different perspectives, like you're talking about, becomes more natural because we're not so siloed. We're not like the world and and everything around us is against us that we are actually in collaboration with. And, and I, so I'm, I thank you for, for sharing that perspective. And that's, it really does make a difference. And when you can start to communicate from that multidimensional perspective that it really helps to understand, I think, it, it turns less into reaction, uh, which is almost like, um, in some ways, I feel like the reaction stems to be from a fighting because we're so siloed out that it's almost like we're in our own ego and the ego takes over. And so we're, it's almost like we don't want that ego death. And so we're, we're fighting that, that death, that perspective, right? But when we have that oneness, we recognize that the ego is a tool. It's a part of us, just as it is every one, everyone else's ego is a part of them. And therefore, everyone and everyone's ego is a part of the whole. And so therefore, there is no death that we need to uh, you know, fight against, that it's, it's a collaboration, it's a connection. And that really helps uh, approach the communication more from that curiosity, from that seeking to understand, from that connection, and from that, honestly, in many ways, that growth. Right. No, 100% right. Because when you are triggered and you react, then you bypass, right, that whole brewing part of it, the quantum state, right? Because you want to always be at zero or one, but sometimes you have to be in between to actually decide which side to choose, right? That discernment requires you to kind of a little bit like, what do I really want? Like, you know, and you have to go through that uncomfortable time like, you know, that that is an uncomfortable phase, which is what a lot of people don't want to go through. So they kind of just want to stay on the surface. Right. And then they want to do that. But you're going to ultimately get tired of it because you're not going to go anywhere. Yes. Because all the growth is in that in, in that state that's uncomfortable. It's in that state right. where you are nowhere. Right. It's in that state which is sticky. Yes. I mean, and that's 
where all the all the good stuff is at. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's so true. I mean, that's one of the very first things that Amber ever shared with me was was about breath and in the pause and how so much occurs in the in between like when you inhale and, and then pause and right before you're about to exhale and then when you exhale and right before you're about to inhale so much life and so much purpose happens in those two pauses and and that's where we can pull whatever is coming in next we can inhale you know, whatever experience that we desire. And, and, and it's not just from, you know, okay, yes, we need oxygen. We need life force energy. We need that. But it can be the, we can inhale the people around us in terms of the energy that they're bringing forward or connecting with or the experience that we're having or the world around us. And when we exhale, it's not just an exhale of, you know, of, of, of air and breath. It is, it can be an exhale of that which is no longer serving us. Mm-hmm. So through those two pauses, we can have so much clarity and connection in that pause. And it just, when she shared that with me, just my my mind was just blown. I was like, wow, here's something. It's no wonder that the very thing that keeps us alive is so much more important than we give it credit. Right, exactly. And the funny thing is that when you pause, then you are affecting how you're going to do your breathing, right? So because you're affecting how you're going to breathe, you're affecting your entire existence. Yes. That's very well said. And when we can, no pun intended, breathe those pauses into our communication, and then it allows us to be in more direction, into more conscious choice, into more intention, into how we communicate and how we act and how 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 we be, for a lack of better words, because we get so caught in the human doing that we forget that we are human being. So it's important. Right. And I mean, the fact that we had a pause, right, on this yeah. podcast because my internet <laughs> went out and that pause kind of like, yeah, because it it almost, you know, it kind of brings you in a different place and it actually is good for you to have those, uh, you know, pauses because it changes your pattern, basically. Right. It changes the pattern. It's almost like, you know, it was funny because when I was working, you know, I mean, uh, I've been working in a corporate world and there's, there are times when things get really fumey. I mean, just like with life. Right. And one of the, one of the mentor I had, he always said that whenever he gets too riled up, you know, with, with the work politics or stress with coworkers, he just goes and takes a long walk. Right. Mm. And, and then he comes back and then he looks at the same problem and it doesn't look the same anymore. And that to me is a representation of the pause, mm. right? That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a reset. It's exactly. Ah, uh, that's, I like that. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Don't often hear that with corporate. <laughs> so that's, uh, exactly. That's, that's refreshing. Yeah. I, um, I know our, our time is kind of, kind of getting close to wrapping up and, one thing that we always like to do with our guests, uh, especially uh, individuals like yourself, when you like the term heart leader is someone that has logic and intellect paired with heart and compassion. And since you embody that so, so much, which is why you're on this call right now uh, <laughs> and, and sharing your amazing wisdom and your experience, um, you know, what, what does the term heart leader invoke in you when you hear it? Like, how do I see that convergence? Is that what you're asking? Correct. So it's interesting because you mentioned the breathing, right? So to me, the breathing kind of brings us home, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily do conscious breathing all the time, but we should do our best to use that as a gauge, right? Because if you think about it, your breathing is keeping your entire flow going in a rhythmic way. And whatever interactions that you allow to come in your field, if they affect your breathing, then that to me is a very good gauge for you to decide how long you want to be affected by it. Mm. Right? Beautiful. Because at at the end of the day, we are choosing every nanosecond how we want to spend it. Mm. And I'm telling you, it's not easy by any means when life happens, right? because I'm guilty of it like everybody else. But the good thing is that I'm someone who's going to, like, I'm very, like, I'm going to go all the way in because that is where the friction is, right? That's where the learning is. That's where the growth is. Because I want to feel the misery that I want to 
like I'm already seeing it. I'm okay with feeling it because I like to go to the dark alley because that's when I go and find more bright lights, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they are kind of like, there's a polarity, right? So that's why you have to go to the deepest wound because, you know, like Rumi says, right? Light shines through your wounds. Mm. I love that. So, so that is the convergence, by the way, because they are kind of just, it's because, you know, they're all right there, right? It's kind of like, it's, it's like, because we process everything by comparison, right? So, and then it's interesting, right? When we're talking about the boundary, mm -hmm. because the boundary also is a perception. Yes. Right? Yes. So what I yeah. consider a boundary, you may not consider that and vice versa. Yeah. True. Very relative experience. Exactly. Wow. So I think that that to me, ultimately, it all comes back to the fact that how do you live in that zero point energy, right? How do you live in that resonance you mentioned? Remember, how do you live in that even when you're in a sticky state, because you can still have a zero point energy because you are accepting that for your growth. Mm. Yes. So someone who is, is conscious, willing to feel the feels and expand and grow and in someone who's constantly looking for, for the light. Exactly. And you are kind of synchronizing both sides of your brain. You're synchronizing yeah. your heart and mind, right? Yeah. And basically you are accessing your multidimensionality because when you kind of do all of it, it's, it's like, because I actually, uh, feel that I am so tapped into it, which is why I would love everybody to understand that. Yeah. No, nobody will be fearful of AI if they really understand that how multidimensionality makes us so much more unique. Yes. I, thank you for saying that. I mean, that's so true. It's, I mean, even yeah. when we, when we activate coherence, in many ways, we are embodying multidimensionality. Yes, we actually are hundred percent. You know why? Because we can't attain that. Because when you are, you know, you are multidimensional, whether you accept it or not, you yeah. actually are. So let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's create that as a math axiom. <laughs> it's like a foundation, right? Yeah. And then, right. Because that's your gauge, by the way, that coherence is your gauge, that you're one with everything and you are not stuck anywhere where you are, you know, you're affecting your flow, right? Because I, I actually wrote down because I, I have a quotation book because my quotation comes in comes to me all the time. And I wrote down this, that limiting beliefs mm. creates attachment. Mm. Yes. And then I said, attachment is inversely proportional to the flow. I love it. I had to come up with the equation as an engineer. Yes. So I did <laughs> yeah. that. That was, the, that was the bottom line message. And I was like, yes, that is very true because it's all there. Right. Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a beautiful way. And just as a rocket scientist, as a rocket scientist does, turn it into exactly. a Exactly. I'm using it. all of my, my, yeah, all of my faculty. In, uh, and I think that that is, the, that is the, actually, I have to say this, by the way, because a lot of people say that I bring things in a way that it makes it easier for them to understand, right? Which is a representation of coherence. Yes. Right? And I think the reason I do that is because I truly understand it, right? Yes. The, because there's no way I can express it if I don't um, embody it myself, right? And, and so it becomes easy for me to actually, so, and not that I embody it all the time, but that is one of my goals, right? Because we all have that goal is that we can embody it. Uh, and I think we can embody it more and more as we realize the benefit of it. Yes. Yeah. Well, in, in the end, it's not a result. It's a process. Exactly. And, and so when we can embodying in, in the learning and the growing is all a process. And that's what's so, that's the beauty in it. If we're so stuck in the result, then, then we're in stagnation, which is an opposition of the universal structure. And so when we can allow ourselves to get out of stagnation and into the flow, flow is ever expansion and therefore process. Right. And actually, you know what? It's funny you said that because I really loved it last time when we were talking off the camera where, I mean, off the podcast mm -hmm. where you mentioned the word process, right? And result. Yeah. Yes. And didn't you connect the process with emotion and result with logic, right? 
Yes, yes. And and so basically, we're putting uh, the result more into the left hemisphere, right? Yeah. And the process more into the right hemisphere, right? Yes. And I just loved it because I had never heard of it like that. So I just love, because I love, and you know, I mean, because you are adding another layer in my layers of understanding, right? And uh, because it's kind of, a, you know, that, that binary thing. And I actually, you know, it's funny because process and result, uh, it's like a journey and a destiny. Ah, uh, absolutely. hundred right? percent. Right. So, and journey is intertwined with the destiny, which is one of my quote, uh, because I say that all the time, because because, right? Because it depends on when you collapse, when yeah. you make a quantum collapse to experience that and call it whatever it is at that particular moment. Yes, I love it. And oftentimes that, that collapse can become that pause that we were talking about in the start of something new after. That is true yes. because you're resetting yourself while you're collapsing. Yes. Electrons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, yeah. I feel like I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours and uh, hopefully this will be one of, of many, many conversations, uh, you know, not just on podcasts, but continuing friendship and just really enjoy yeah. time together. Um, where can people, let's say people want to uh, connect with you um, because you're awesome and you have so much <laughs> wisdom and, and experience to share. And, um, and so can you, can you uh, provide, you know, where people can, can learn about you and, and we'll make sure we have all of those links uh, in, not only up on the screen, but down on, in the description below as well. Yes, thank you. So yeah, the best way to get a hold of me is um, my website, which is my first name, lastname.com. So it's easy. They can type my name and they'll find all the social media platforms that I'm on. Uh, mostly I'm on a YouTube and Instagram and uh, LinkedIn also for my, uh, you know, for my uh, professional um, connections. And then my book is actually a very good tool because I put my heart and soul into my book, The Quantum Being. And I would recommend that if people like what I what they heard, they should definitely check it out. It's on Amazon, The Quantum Being is. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. And we'll put links to everything, including your book, uh, which both Amber and I have downloaded and we're so grateful and uh, we're so happy. So thank you so much for sharing uh, all, all your vulnerability, your authenticity, uh, your wisdom, your experience. I mean, seriously, it just every time we talk, uh, I, I just, yeah, it just sometimes there aren't words. And, and I just appreciate that, that level of connection. And it, it just means a lot, a lot. So thank you. Yeah. No, thank you very much as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.